Well, hello traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is the 15th of February. It's actually President's Day. The market is closed. Well, the US market's closed, but the world economy is moving. And what do I do? Do I take a vacation or do I hang out here with you in the mornings and give you an update of what to expect and some hot stocks? So let's talk about this week. Now, this week is a fragmented week, which means we have one day off, which is Monday. Usually, typically, most of the time, under most case scenarios, whenever you have a fragmented week, you have a slow market action, or at least it takes a few days for things to begin moving around. Now, let me quickly take a look while I have you here. I haven't looked at this yet today. I haven't even prepared it for you. Let me do it in real time, kind of get an idea of what to expect this week. So that's today. Markets are closed nothing tomorrow wednesday wednesday we've got retail sales and ppi that's big and we've got fomc minutes that's not going to be as big because we already know what the fed is projecting they're not going to raise rates or at least short-term rates for quite some time you've got housing starts you've got the biggest report of the week which is the jobless claims on thursday manufacturing petroleum not going to be big we know that there's just way too much supply Existing home sales is not going to be very instrumental. We know that homes are at a 14-year at sales high, new and existing, or something to that effect. It's just crazy because of low rates. And we've got the PMI composite flash. So we do, we do have some news beginning towards the second half of the week. Don't be surprised if Tuesday, if tomorrow, we don't have a lot of trading action in the market. Don't, don't be surprised if you see the market rather fragmented, choppy, bigger spreads, lower volatility. Those are all very characteristics of a fragmented week. And usually, most of the time, 90% of the time, whenever you have a holiday, during the week you have a fragmented week and the week is just kind of slow or at least starts off slowly and then heads into more normal trading range within a couple of days. So by Thursday, we should be back to normal trading session. Now, in terms of global economy, even though the U.S. market's closed, global markets never sleep. You've got Japan's Nikkei index closed above 30,000 folks, first time since 1990. So do you think the global market is in a depression right now? Look at this thing, since 1990. We're talking 30 years, 30 years to make it to new highs. It's pretty impressive. Optimism is setting in Washington, came through on trillions of dollars of more aid for the economy and encouraging company earnings reports have helped stocks grind higher this month. But folks, we are overbought. I talked about it, sentiment levels, momentum levels, market internals, the number of stocks making new highs. Even by Warren Buffett's uh, fundamental analysis, we are just so grossly overbought. But billions and trillions of dollars of aids are coming into the market. Liquidity is helping propel the market to new highs. But again, internally, things are not as, as uh, pretty as they are on the surface. And you guys need to understand that and start becoming more and more defensive. Strongest, the strong buying in Tokyo was driven by news that Japan's economy grew nearly 13% annual pace in the last quarter. That's amazing. That's amazing in light of the global uh, COVID that we're seeing. Truly, truly amazing. Now, back in the US on Friday, tech companies led a late afternoon rally on Wall Street that capped a week of wobbly trading with the major stock indexes hinting hitting all-time highs. And folks, I'm telling you right now, 90% of that is due to the fact that the markets are anticipating a lot more aid and a lot more stimulus. Had, it, had we had the earnings been below expectations, they've been beaten down for the last three quarters. That's the only reason they're higher. I want you guys to understand that. But majority of companies have now reported the latest earnings and the results have been surprisingly good again. They've had three quarters of being beaten down. So you beat them down enough, they'll be positive. But again, they're that way because, not because companies are doing that great, they're not, they're suffering. Some are doing well, most are suffering. But the beautiful part about it is, the expectations have been beaten down so much that it's almost impossible not to beat them at this point. And next quarter, we're expecting positive numbers. Now, roughly 75% of companies in the S&P have released earnings showing overall gro growth of 2.8%, sharp reversal from 13% contraction. But again, the numbers have been beaten down. When you, when you have nine months to beat those expectations lower and to lower them, you're gonna beat certain expectations. But in all, in all fairness, we've had a hell of a bad economy. Now, 
looking at the S&P 500, I'll just give you a quick look to show you where we are right now, you will see we are just diverging like there's no tomorrow. And I mean no tomorrow. And I keep showing you this. Look at that. We're going higher and higher, but look at RSI levels. We can't even get to 70. The S&P here is at 357 and the RSI is at 84. We're now at 392 and the RSI can't even get to 70. Folks, we are due to a pullback to the 50-day moving average if I've ever seen one. All right, we are way overdue. Markets are extremely overbought right now, and uh, everything. And I, let me let me just quickly show you this. You really have to see this. Let me let me just show you momentum. Just in case you're new, I know that if you've been watching these videos every day, I go through this all the time. But you guys got to see this. Look at the number of stocks in the in the S and P trading or in the overall market that are trading above the 200-day moving average right now. Ninety percent. Look at the number of stocks trading above the, the this is any stock over $2, 83% of stock. And last month, 85, and we pulled down, went back up. Last month, we had 87% of stocks and the market was lower, trading above the 200-day moving average. Now we have 90. And if you look at this chart, I, I, I got to show you this. Now, remember, this is all, this is the broad market. This is everything. Let me show you this here. Look at a 20-year chart. Look where we're at right now. Not a 20 year chart. This only goes back to about 16 or 17 years. Look at this. We are, so we are, the, we are at levels that we haven't been in, oh my God, long time. Actually, this does go about 20 years. They expanded it. I'll be darned. Let's see if we can go further. Wow, look at that. Huh. They've expanded it. It was only able to go about 12 years. So look at where we're at right now. We're at 91. Look at last time we were at these levels, uh, back September 2009 and before that, 2004. So these are the highest levels since 2004 and since 2009. Look at that. Percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average in the overall market. And, and, let me show you the 50-day. It, it's, it's amazing how overbought the stocks are right now, all because of the stimulus and because of positive numbers. But again, look at where we're at right now on the 50-day line. Momentum levels are just way, way overbought. Look at long-term, look at that. We're, we, we're turning down right now. So we're seeing narrowing of momentum right now on the 50-day moving average on the broad market. My advice to you is be very, very cautious, be careful, the market is about to turn. It may not be a big turn, it may be a very small turn, but folks, the market is about to turn. But I've got two stocks that I believe will continue moving higher. First stock is Forterra. FRTA, it's up 52% this year, three-year return, 169%. What do they do? Concrete products, Russell 2000. You guys know how much I like about basic materials, concrete production, basic materials, and Russell 2000. Basic material, smaller stocks. Manufacturers of concrete and clay building products. Operates United States, Canada, and United Kingdom. The stock is doing something well. Let me show you the chart. Uh, let me go back to the bars. Makes a swing high, three down days, and cut, starts coming back up. I love that. That's my 4x4 four four pattern. Ticker symbol FRTA, I would be buying right around the 2160 level, and if it breaks the 2050, 2040 level, I'm out. If I was buying this. Now, next one is desktop metals. What do they do? 3D, metal 3D printing. Printing 3D. Provides mass production and turnkey additional manufacturing. Offers metal 3D printing technology. The stock is up 202% this year. And if you look, if you look at the chart, you will see again, swing high, three lower days coming back up. I like the stock. I like the stock a lot. Desktop metal, ticker symbol DM. And the previous one was Forterra. For Terra, ticker symbol FRTA. That's for Terra and desktop metals. Now, folks, before I let you go, and I know it's a holiday, I want you guys to have a great day. I don't want you to think about the markets, but it's no secret. It's no secret that Main Street investors are fighting an uphill battle against Wall Street's automated trading machines. You guys know it's true. 
They, it's been going on for a while, and I've been talking about it nonstop. These supercomputers can execute thousands of trades in a matter of seconds, triggering massive, and I mean massive, stock runs before you even have a time to blink. But that unfair advantage, folks, that unfair advantage ends today. Now, you, and I mean you, you have an opportunity to make same light and fast profits as the pros on Wall Street. Thanks to this newly developed trading technology we call the storm. That's right. All you've got to do, click the link, click on the learn the link below, click on this link below to learn about the storm and how it can help you not only get ahead of Wall Street, but supersize your trading account. Now, who does not, who does not want to supersize their trading account? Folks, click here to learn about the storm and how it can help you supersize your trading account now make sure to like this video and subscribe if you're watching on youtube stay ahead of the market stay ahead of this market by being the first to be notified when we post new videos and if you're watching this and if you're enjoying this video and if you're getting something out of it give me some feedback learn about the storm you guys have to learn about it this is how i get all these cool trades with my algorithms see i've got it all set up here and it's all moving up and then i give you the stocks and so forth and so forth you got to check out Storm. Most importantly, have an amazing day off. Bye, guys. Have a great, great President's Day. And I'll see you all tomorrow in the morning.